Welcome everybody to Today in Space. I am your space science podcast host from the East Coast, Alex Giorfanos, and it's great to have you here with us. After uh, a little bit, we are back. We're starting May off with this episode. We've got a lot to cover from a space perspective. There's been, there's so much happening in space right now. It's, it's, it's an extremely exciting time for, for, for space development, for things that are happening right now. Uh, that have been long in the works that are going to help us explore uh, space more as we know it and and understand the universe, like with James Webb Space Telescope, which we're going to talk about here in a second. So we're going to go through those really quickly. We're going to add, do a lightning round. We're going to have links for all these things if you want to dive a little bit deeper. But I just want to scratch the surface to help you um, better grasp like how all these things that are happening are connected. And I'm sure there's plenty of things that you probably didn't even know were going on at the same time. So we're going to try and connect all of those for you here today. And then I'm going to close out, talk a little bit about the balance and about, um, and we haven't done one in a little bit and it felt appropriate for me. I, I needed to reset and kind of rethink about how I was approaching things and so I can come at it from a better place. We're all, we're human beings after all, right? Um, so we're not going to get things right especially on the first go and uh, uh you know I'm, I'm literally putting the studio back together here um so a little time off but i'm ready to go and i'm ready to talk about all things space and the scientific mindset so thank you for joining us today as always remember that this podcast is brought to you by ag 3d printing it's our 3d printing lab where we bring ideas into reality and You know, that service is available for any of you that are out there that are looking to bring an idea from a piece of paper into reality with a 3D printed part. Uh, Recently, and we're going to show a little bit of a video here, we got our 3D scanner up and running, which was one of the things we wanted to do earlier in the year, but it just didn't happen. And thanks to uh, my friend Matt, uh, we were able to get my PC up and running. Thank you, Matt, uh, because building my own PC as much of an, as, as of an, as, As much of an adventure as building my own PC was, uh, I really would have just liked someone to say, this is what you're looking for, here's the part you should buy, Um, but with a little help from my friends, I was able to get that up and running, which means our 3D scanner is up and running. It's an IR sensor scanner, and it actually, we're actually able to make 3D models of things in real life, and then we can then take that model and 3D print things. Um, but there's so many things you can do once you have that data, once you have that three-dimensional structure that you're able to now manipulate. Um, you could take something from the real world and bring it into the digital world. Um, and there's so many possibilities from uh, reproducing, reverse engineering some part that doesn't exist anymore, right? Maybe you've got an old oven, it works great, and you've got this knob that broke, but it's some old GE oven you haven't made, they haven't made in years. If you still have one of those, we could scan that and make you a replacement and then you could be able to use that over and over and over again and keep that thing that has value that's still working uh reuse it bring it back to life uh and give it give it its own fresh new look there's also the possibility of you know if you're into cosplay and you really want to get into making really awesome custom custom outfits custom weapons whatever it might be a 3D scanner allows you so much customization for you as the cosplayer. And we're going to show that off with a few different things. Obviously, we have our SpaceX Starman suit where I, I've got to get into that so I can actually uh, uh, make that real. And then there's also going to be some uh, some video game stuff and some other just awesome stuff. Like now with the gaming PC, I'm also playing a little bit of Halo. So obviously, all of those things become possible the mandalorian the mandalorian helmet we still have to finish so there's a lot of things that this 3d scanner can help us with that we even we're not even 100 percent sure the full potential of that 3d scanner so we are able to do a lot of different things if you have any idea that you want to bring into reality our friends over at snap color we talked about them our last episode um we helped them start with their first ideation uh their first part bring the idea see if it was even reasonable and possible then they were able to take that run with it win a few competitions, get some money, and then now they have a full product. It's out, um, and we're, we're super proud of them, and, and we're super grateful that, that they chose us to help them bring that idea into reality. So that's that's big picture. That's that's if you got a little money to spend, if you're really trying to take that big thing forward. But there's also a way you can support the podcast that isn't that intensive. We have our Etsy shop, ag3dprinting.etsy.com. We have a bunch of stuff that's on there that's 
that's fun stuff. It's not expensive, um, but they're practical things. Um, like, for instance, our phone stand here. I literally just had my iPhone standing on that. It's our little rocket ship phone stand. It's literally holds your phone at the right height. I have Face ID on here. Picks up my face every time. Uh, I use that. I have one at pretty much every desk that I have. Uh, I love that little thing. That's there. We also have our James Webb Space Telescope Coaster, which has been a, a really big seller. Um, and why not? Uh, uh, James Webb Space Telescope unfolding the universe. Uh, and we'll discuss where it's at right now. But uh, yes, a lot of exciting things and fun ways to support this podcast because, you know, we try and bring all things space and, and the scientific mindset and talk to a bunch of people who work in science, who, who live and breathe science. Um, we try and bring all of that uh, here, and, and AG3D is one of the things that, that has helped make that possible. So um, go make sure to check that out. And of course, follow us on Today in Space Pod on Instagram and Twitter, uh, Today in Space on TikTok, and of course, our Facebook page, Today in Space Podcast. You can check us there. So let's go through a lightning round here for the latest on what's going on here in space. Later this month, Boeing is slated to have Starliner. It's already being processed and put together, but the Boeing Starliner is about, on May 19th, about to launch again on OFT2. Boeing and SpaceX were in the commercial crew program, and the Starliner was going up against Crew Dragon to see who was going to be the first to uh, bring America's ability to send American astronauts from American soil on American spacecraft. Um, and on the last attempt of the Boeing spacecraft trying to do his robotic docking to the International Space Station and then coming back on. There were issues. They were able to recover the spacecraft, but there was some loss of, I, I could get this wrong, but essentially the, I think the clock was wrong. So it, it was expecting to be at a different place in the telemetry in the orbit. And when it wasn't there, it freaked out and was firing the thrusters, but they were able to fix that. Apparently there was a lot of software issues that needed to be done to connect that and it just shows you the complexity of having not just launching something into space but for all the systems that interact and go back and forth they they all have to be pretty flawless and have a lot of redundancies um it's part of the reason why there's not a lot of people that actually launch stuff into space um it's difficult and then to launch humans and have that that extra level of redundancy to make sure that the human beings are safe you know, just because you've built something before doesn't mean that you can build it again just as good. Uh, and that's not a knock against Boeing. It's just it, it showcases uh, the, the the difficulty of, of the scenario. And that doesn't even get into, that's just the science, right? That's just the nuts and bolts. That doesn't even go into the people that are helping make this science progress. And it's a human challenge as much as it is a, a physics and a, and a science challenge. So May 19th, look for that. Very exciting. We want Boeing to succeed, right? We there's there's no reason why we should spend all this money for a bunch of spacecraft to be developed for us to launch humans with and then only use one. If they're all viable options, they, they should be up there. And if, if it's competitive enough that the two can be can be purchased against each other and NASA can then have options to send people like there's there's a lot that can happen. And, and SpaceX has kind of opened up this the shell of I know I said this was gonna be quick, but <laughs> SpaceX has opened up the shell of private astronauts. NASA going from retiring the space shuttle in 2011 to 2020, where they had the the Crew Dragon for SpaceX actually able to launch those humans again. Like the, there was a lot that needed to be done to get to that point. So um, we wish Boeing and the Starliner team all the best with that launch, and uh, and, and I, we want to see them successful. I want to see that spacecraft send people into orbit, so uh, into the International Space Station, and then back safely. I think that would be amazing. And Starliner's built for really missions around the solar system. So, you know, once it gets past this initial hurdle, it should be able to really open up what it's capable of doing. Next up, uh, James Webb Space Telescope is currently in instrument commissioning. So uh, they were able to align all the mirrors of James Webb Space Telescope, which I'm going to add a link to this. But it is uh, absolutely bananas. The science, bananas, that's a weird word for me to say. It's absolutely insane the technical nature of aligning those mirrors and what they went through there's a whole page that has a ton of crazy graphics about how the data is being captured from james Webb space telescope and how the alignment helps dial that in and the the, the pure data that we're getting from this 
this uh, infrared telescope is going to show us uh, unbelievable clarity of light and some of the earliest light that's out there so i'm really looking forward to that so that continues you can follow along we have this here and we'll have this in this week's episode there is a where is web page where they actually keep you up to date we've been using it as part of the content for this uh for any time we talk about james Webb space telescope but literally right now it's an instrument commissioning they had a media teleconference that you can actually replay those things here they have the link to the blogs here showing all the the latest news but then they also showing you the temperatures we've got the hot side at 126 degrees fahrenheit right now the cold side is at minus 384 degrees fahrenheit and uh, all the different instruments miri uh nir cam uh near spec uh, F, like all the different instruments have their own temperatures and uh, just they're doing a great job with this where where is web pages that's that's the whole reason i bring this up so go there jwst.nasa.gov and look for the where is web and follow that it's amazing they even have the whole timeline on the bottom it's a beautiful thing i would really highly recommend it we have two rocket lab pieces of news which is awesome we really do love rocket lab it's a great company they've they've had their struggles like every space launch company you know spacex is obviously the 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 most popular the one that we talk about the most here but rocket lab uh, you know spacex has also had many failures (laughs) in fact they're one of the best at failing and then coming out of it succeeding Uh, and rocket lab had a huge huge win on on their latest on their, their latest launch there and back again was the name of the mission great lord of the rings reference But they launched their electron rocket, delivered the payload to orbit successfully, and they attempted to recover their first stage rocket for the first time. You know, they had talked about this move to switching towards uh, reusability, and one of the things they wanted to do, because, you know, how SpaceX does it, where they're able to control the descent of the rocket, but then also uh, for the thing like the drone ship, um, you need to fail at that a bunch of times to get to the point where that can be a fully reusable thing and and really against all the the industry that was there before it for the most part didn't believe that was even possible to do in the first place never mind make a business around it but rocket lab has taken a slightly different approach which i think is awesome rocket lab was using a sikorsky helicopter to grab the first stage rocket of electron after it had par- it had de- deployed a parachute so you've got the i'll use our falcon 9 our resin falcon 9 here but they had a parachute carrying the first stage down as it was coming down and then the helicopter came in and grabbed and held it and they had to eventually drop it because of how much drag was on the the helicopter for something like that which is a crazy thing to think about and shows the sheer talent of the pilots that were able to do that um and know enough to drop the rocket but they gathered a ton of really important data for whether or not, you know, they, they, they probably spent a bunch of time, money, effort trying to dial in, like, how how possible is this to even do? And if we get it right, how is this going to make a business case for it and help us recover these things? But then also to do it and actually get the real data, uh, there's so much value to that. And that's one of the one of the real lessons that I think SpaceX kind of retaught the space industry from the early Mercury Apollo days that it's like in order to get something as grand and amazing and influential and um, e- efficient and important as the Saturn V rocket was and, and the Apollo capsule and, and command module like it took many failures and, and, and that history has already been written from from the early NASA days. And SpaceX showed the same thing. And Rocket Lab is also, you know, they they hit a bunch of mistakes that obviously they weren't expecting and no one ever does. But they changed they changed it up. They switched it up and said, we need to make some really big uh, moves. And, of course, they talked about Neutron, which is going to really be their, their truly reusable rocket. But now they're going to go this whole this whole other way with, with Electron. And I think it's beautiful. I thought that was amazing. I can't wait to see more attempts of helicopters catching rockets i mean that's that's the best (laughs) i mean that as far as aerospace goes that's that's amazing to 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 give another purpose to to a helicopter and then those pilots right um how many pilots are now potentially gonna people are gonna become pilots now because they're gonna see someone catch a rocket with a helicopter it opens up our minds to so many different possibilities 
we never really thought were possible before. When we see it actually happen, thinking it is one thing, dreaming it is another, but actually seeing what it does in real life when the rubber hits the road, it's the best. You can't beat that. Uh, And Rocket Lab in May of 2022, uh, they're supposedly launching the Capstone satellite. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull that up. Capstone is an important spacecraft for the Artemis program. It's it's one of the pieces for the gateway. And the gateway is this idea of making life long-term in space. In order to do that, having stations at all these different places where we're going to want to go from going really fast to controlled descent down to a planet or a surface, that's what the gateway is going to allow us to do is, is give us these little parking stations where we can go to to safely transition from travel place to place to descend from orbit down to the planet. We do the same thing with the International Space Station today, right? We launch stuff up, it docks to the station, they spend time up there, then they undock and come back to the planet. Uh, when you're going to the moon, you're going to be traveling extremely extremely high velocities because that's what got you to the moon in a reasonable amount of time in the first place. Uh, and if, if you're dealing with gravity, the way to slowly come down is to match orbit with something else, dock, and then you can take a separate spacecraft specifically designed for landing from the station down to the surface. So um, it becomes a much safer, much more repeatable, way more redundancies for traveling in space where, you know, if we just sent any kind of spacecraft to the moon, uh, you're, that's just not how it works. <laughs> so Capstone is really important. It's expected to arrive at Mahia Launch Complex in New Zealand in the next few days. This was an article written by, written by Rachel Hoover on May 10th. The Capstone spacecraft is the Cislunar Autumn, uh, uh, the Cislunus Autonomous, okay. I'm going to say this correctly this time. <laughs> I can read it, I promise. The Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment, or Capstone spacecraft, and it's going to chart a new path, as they, as they say, for NASA's Moon Orbiting Space Station Gateway. Uh, and it just started, to, so May 9th, it shipped from the Terran Orbital Corporation in Irvine, California, to the launch site at Rocket Lab Con- Complex, uh, LC1, and that's in Mahia Pen- uh, Peninsula in New Zealand. So our folks in New Zealand, cheers! Uh, you guys are you guys have an amazing launch provider with Rocket Lab, and that location is beautiful. So look forward to that. That's a huge mission. And if we go into Capstone a little bit here again, these missions will be here. Uh, what is Capstone? Capstone is a microwave oven sized CubeSat. So again. Uh, This is the technology that I did my major qualifying project in school. CubeSat's really tiny spacecraft that could fit in the palm of your hand in some cases, but uh, miniaturized just like our phones went from being these giant things that operators need to design that had tons of mass and weight, just like our TVs, right? They all miniaturized. CubeSat's is that progression for spacecraft that, that don't need a lot of space and allows us to launch more things into space. Backtracking. Capstone is a microwave oven-sized CubeSat weighing just 55 pounds, and it'll serve as the first spacecraft to test a unique elliptical lunar orbit as part of the Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment as a pathfinder for Gateway. Uh, And Capstone will help reduce the risk for future spacecraft by validating innovative navigation technologies and verifying the dynamics of this halo-shaped orbit so it it, this is something that we've talked about uh with other guests here on the podcast we'll we'll throw their episodes up here if you guys want to go listen to them but but the the message that we're getting through here is that we have all this interest in space and we we want to do all of these things but the infrastructure the the things that would be there that are there for our airliners right what makes the it possible for us to fly as quickly and as often as we do, and as cheaply, even though it's not cheap, as cheap as it is for the the everyday person to fly around the world, the infrastructure that's in place to do that safely, uh, to the point where people aren't, uh, there, there isn't a, a statistical reason for people to be worried about flying uh, airplanes, we do not have that for space travel. We just got our own country, America's ability, to send human beings into space. 
And to think that we're just going to make the jump towards space being something that's very easy for us to do and repeatable and everyone can do it, a lot needs to get put in place. And things like this, like Capstone, are absolutely huge. And, and trying out these new different orbits, it's allowing us to test all this stuff to like know where everything actually is so that by the time we start unleashing the amount of things we want to launch into space especially around the moon and the gateway we'll have an idea of how to know where everything is <laughs> so we don't have things colliding with each other because that's bad uh, but that's that's our rocket lo- uh, rocket lab news and then starship got delayed again uh, the faa delayed the approval of whether they were going to grant access for spacex to continue the starship launch site in boca chica texas on whether it's going to get environmental approval. There's been a lot of organizations that have have spoken out, space organizations like the Mars Society and a bunch of other societies that got together, uh, space interests, basically looking at that that environmental data, looking at the potential of what Starship can do for space travel and space development exploration. Again, like we're talking about Starliner and the SpaceX Crew Dragon. We're talking about, you know, a handful of people going into space with starship we're talking about the potential of hundreds of people going to a place at one time or sending a a giant spacecraft that could launch land be a place where people can live be the actual be the building that people live in right and then launch people back and and come home and be able to lift a bunch of payloads into into orbit that's that's a huge thing i mean you're 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 basically bringing with you a um what's the word i'm looking for not a civilization but i mean you could literally send basically a colony it's 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 a mobile colony of starship and it, it's it's a huge huge step forward but that's been delayed so we're waiting to see if that gets approved in the meantime at the same time sls as we talked about in the last episode um is delayed and they're uh, still working on those fixes we haven't gotten any hard dates for when the next planned potential launches um, or even rollout. I don't even think we've heard of the, the, the next rollout to go back out to the pad for the wet dress. We will keep you up to date on that. But the question now is, who's going to launch first? Is it SLS? Is it Starship? We don't know at the moment. So if it goes to the August standpoint, it's probably going to be Starship. But we'll see. Who knows? I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past. Uh, but we're really excited for both of those. Uh, and I'm frantically trying to figure out how I can attend both of those things uh, with a schedule that's always changing. So <laughs> so we will see. We will see. That's it for our lightning round of uh, space news. So thanks, thanks for uh, going through that with us. And to close this episode, let's talk a little bit about the balance. So um, the balance, for those that are new, is kind of my way of talking about the human side of space and just life right? We're all human beings. We're all emotional apes at the end of the day. And we've also all been through two years of, of, of a pandemic and and everything that comes with that. And the world wasn't happy go lucky, uh, in 2019 either. So (laughs) the balance this week is talking about staying, staying true to the mission, staying on mission. And how do you get yourself back out of it right if things get in the way and and that's a lot of the a lot of what i'm talking about this week is that you know i started this year a lot of plans a lot of things i i just was like oh yeah this is going to be so easy to do one of them being my pc my gaming pc and we know how that turned out it's uh what may may 11th (laughs) march march 11th no may 11th Sometimes things don't go according to plan, and and actually, probably most of the time they don't. Um, James Webb Space Telescope is a great example of that. James Webb Space Telescope was in development for an extremely long time, and if someone told me or told the people that were working on the mission when they first were trying to get James Webb Space Telescope made, that it would launch in in the 2020s <laughs> there's there's no one would have expected that uh but sometimes that's that's how things go and you've got to keep it going and james Webb space telescope is such a great example of how to keep it together 
for when your moment finally comes. And they've they've already, I mean, they're, they're still dialing in the instruments. They haven't even finished this at all yet. And uh, just getting the telescope ready, and already it's blown most of us away for, from what it's already shown us from the engineering missions, from, from just showing the sharpness of some of the images on the instruments. The instruments haven't even dialed in, right? Like, it has shown us so much. And without even showing us images, it had to be unfolded in space like origami. And everything had to work correctly. Otherwise, the sequences afterwards wouldn't have. But all of those did, right? That's insane. That's really insane. You know, and the space industry is... Uh, the, the U.S. space industry, although I would argue it has a big effect on the space industry around the world as well, when the U.S. retired the space shuttle in 2011, I think that's probably one of the things I say the most, <laughs> when we retired the space station in 2011, uh, I'm not sore about that. Uh, but when we did that, we lost the ability to send our own astronauts into space, human beings into space. It was so iconic to what space meant to people that I remember when I first started this podcast where I would tell people before this podcast that I was going to school for aerospace engineering, they would talk about the shuttle and how it does NASA even exist anymore. And that's how much it affected that. And and that's how it seems sometimes when, when you've got your own goal, your own mission. You know, for me, uh, the mission that I had for a while was to get this show to be weekly. And in 2020, during the pandemic, we actually did that. And then through 2021, we we tried to continue that trend. And as we got into 2022, I was really excited because I, you know, was, was got into a rhythm. We had found a new schedule, uh, you know, and, and this is produced, uh, edited, uh, written by myself. So, um, I, I do have I do have friends that help here or there, but um, it's this is kind of like my diary. This is kind of like my this is these are the thoughts literally. Uh, and and for a while there, it was really good to get them out weekly, um, and I got into a rhythm. But uh, life happens, you know. I'm I'm taking better better care of myself, um, and, and really trying to focus on that. You know, I I have anxiety and stress. And I'm trying to do a better job of dealing with that, as well as uh, some other things that I finally went to a doctor and uh, a doctor that I uh, appreciated and is going through the the logic of things and, and helping me out where a lot of different doctors haven't. Um, I'm not going to go into too many of the specifics there, but things are getting better, but uh, it's demanding. Uh, it's, it's, it's physically and mentally demanding. So um, and on top of it... Uh, some had to deal with some family stuff as well. His family got sick and that took priority over everything else. So I'm trying to grow as a human being. This podcast is, is, is a, is a thing of, of what I'm passionate about. It's right. It's my communication tool for science. It's not something that I'm looking to get any short term returns on. It's something that I plan on doing for as long as I can do it. And uh, I thank everyone who's stayed on this journey and, and <laughs> still stays subscribed, even when I have a, a hectic release schedule. Um, but I want to make sure when I do come on here, I do actually have something to say. And honestly, for a little while there, I did not have my words fully put together. Uh, but I needed, I wanted, had to, in my own mind, uh, stay on the mission. And it's been cool. I've learned that, you know, we started the show as an audio podcast, right? It started off as that. And that was kind of the main focus. Video wasn't even a part of this. And then when we added video, it was really just a place for like, the podcast to have the video put up online, right? It, I wasn't looking at how YouTube does things. I wasn't looking at it as how do how can I take the podcast and put it on YouTube? I was just like, let's just put it up there. And then I learned from doing this stuff weekly and then expanding on YouTube and, and really focusing on like, okay, well, how do we get these videos on YouTube to actually start hitting? Like, what, what, how do you do this on YouTube, right? I was I had to learn that. So in 2021, I really started to learn that and started to figure out a cycle. 
But then I realized that that weekly pace of what I was doing I was actually missing a lot of a lot of the real really good clips that we could pull out for the YouTube channel and just for people who don't have the time to listen to a full episode. I mean, look, we're, we're 34 minutes in here. And if you're still listening, I love you. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but if you're watching this as a clip, like this is, you've now accessed this part of the conversation that probably as just an audio podcast would just, just like, wouldn't have been uh, actually listened by anybody. So I, I really like what's going on with the YouTube channel, even with these episodes not coming out as much. I feel like we're adding a lot of information here, and what I want to do is not necessarily change what we do in the audio podcast, but structure it in a way that whatever we take out of it can be dissected and really released out there for people to to see and to learn and 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 just put it out there in a different way. And I think it 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 has more longevity that way. It reaches more people that way. Uh, and that's it's really something that has kind of blown me away. Learning as a as a, as an engineer, learning the communication side of things. And uh, I guess you could call it marketing, but uh, communicating uh, as an engineer is not something that's uh, a, a very high skill for a lot of engineers, uh, at least talking outside of people who are engineers. <laughs> um, being able to talk to a bunch of different groups and a bunch of different people from a bunch of different backgrounds and find a way to connect, like that is what I really love about this podcast and i'm in this place where you know going back to staying on the mission uh you you reach this line with with that kind of determination where you've got the thing that you want to do you've got the mission you've got you want to put a podcast out and you want that podcast to grow i got into a place in my learning where in order to get that podcast to grow you need to do this weekly and and we got into a really good rhythm um and when life gets in the way and and the mission doesn't go as according to plan it's okay. And, you know, I, I took a look back. I realized that the schedule that I had just isn't going to work for me right now. And so I've got to switch that up. It took me a little bit to figure it out, right? We we needed to do some work with our, our AG3D lab. It needed some of my attention. Um, the PC and the 3D scanner needed my attention. And then there's the, obviously, the AG3D printing shop. So, um, there, there's been a, a lot going out there and that's just work. That's not even like life. That's not even like the people that I've been seeing that I haven't seen in years or, or the family that, that I'm spending time with and, and, and trying to make efforts to go out and see and talk to and, and, and see again. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot. And that's also part of my mission. So, uh, you know, the mission here has always been spread love and spread science. And it, however, I can do that. Uh, and then also put out a podcast is, is what I'm going to do. And I don't know the answer uh, of how that's going to happen in six months or a year or five years or ten minutes. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I'm, I'm adjusting to a new mic stand. I've been I, If you're watching on YouTube, I keep like doing weird arm movements with, <laughs> with this one arm. But it's an ever-evolving thing. And uh, while I've doubted even myself many, many times in, in the past few weeks... Um, just, just having a simple mission that means everything. And, and sometimes you have to redefine that. You know, I was lucky enough that early on in this podcast, we kind of coined the spread love, spread science thing. And it's meant different things to me over, over the years. And right now, um, it, it means spending time with the actual human beings in my life, uh, and spreading love there. And then in spreading science, it's, it's talking about things that have a little bit more life that are not as necessarily daily, but can can live on as clips, as other things, as as social media content, so that while you're doing your life, we're doing our life, and I will be there to meet you when you're ready with clips, with science, with space, with 3D printing. Don't let the craziness of the world get you to believe that the mission is not possible. Never give up, never surrender, right? Isn't that the the Galaxy Quest uh, tone? But that's that's it, folks. That's that's the uh, the balance for this week for for staying on mission. Those are my thoughts. I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, 
Make sure to spread love and spread science. The podcast is brought to you by AG 3D Printing, which is our idea workshop. We bring ideas into reality with 3D printing and now 3D scanning. So if you're interested in any of that, if you've got a project, if you've got an idea that you want to bring into reality or something you want to bring back to life that you only have a few left of, we're, we're here to help you with that. And of course, our if you want to help support the podcast financially and get something cool in the process, our Etsy shop, ag3dprinting.etsy.com. That's where you can get a really cool gift that is for every day for around the house. Again, James Webb Space Telescope coaster for your desk. We have rocket ship phone stand and plenty plenty of other things like the ps4 holder that we have here the vertical one um this is the quantum filament version but we've got a bunch of stuff for you and it helps support this podcast to get us down to florida to watch the sls artemis one launch to get us down to boca chica for starship uh there's a, a ton of really awesome stuff going on and all of that support helps us out, it helps us get to more people, and helps us spread love and spread science. So with that, thank you for joining us this week. We wish you nothing but the best. Live long and prosper. Have a great one. We'll see you for the next episode of Today in Space.